Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> this broadcast is coming to you live from uh, Brown Hall for Community and the Cultural Arts, located and attached to the Elm Street Congregational Church in Bucksport, Maine. And we are at the corner of Elm and Franklin Streets. Tonight, we're delighted to welcome those of you who are present, as well as those of you who are watching by way of the internet or will be watching in, down uh, the archive version. My name is Dr. Stephen York, and I'm the executive director of the Brown Hall uh, Center here, as well as serving as minister of the church. We are delighted to have tonight the Grace Group which is a group of people who get together every Wednesday morning for creative exploration. Uh, to be clear, Grace is not a religious group. It stands for uh, Grassroots Arts and Community Education. It meets here in this room. Uh, Brown Hall is committed to being nonpartisan, non-religious, um, non-ideological, uh, we just welcome everyone who wants to participate um, in the uh, program. So we have artists here tonight who have for years worked privately uh, for the most part on art. And Brown Hall is so pleased to be uh, privileged to exhibit a lot of the work that has never been exhibited before. I want to quickly add that there is also art being, being um, exhibited at the Crumpet, which is downtown where Huckleberries used to be. Um, so the artists are going to introduce themselves and uh, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions. And, uh, so we will begin. And I'm just going to go right down the line, and uh, I'll begin with you, Ellen. Um, what I would like all of you to do is to tell us a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, and uh, you know, basically your your story as you, as it is. Uh, connected, connected to your, your creative, creative work. work. So, so I don't want to put you on the on spot, the spot, but <laughs> you're the closest. Now you're going to need to speak in the mic very closely. Please hold it right up next to your mouth. Hi, I'm Ellen. Uh, I grew up in this area, so I guess that's how I get connected. I went to Bucksport High School, even though I lived way down in the Castine Road in New Orleans. I've still always sort of felt as Bucksport is my home. At this point in my life, I live half of the year in Williamsburg, Virginia, and the other half on a cottage on Toddy Pond. And I'm lucky, and I know it. Um, as far as my art is concerned, uh, once I retired, I decided I'd dabble just a little bit with painting. I'd always wanted to. Uh, one of my friends who was in Williamsburg, much younger gal than me, asked me if I'd like to go to a little art class that was going to be held once a week for, for six weeks. And I said, Lisa, why would you and I be in the same art class? You have a master's degree in fine art, and I can't paint even an apple. But she convinced me it was an all-levels class, so off we went. And it was a lot of fun. Once the six-week course was over, we decided that was so much fun that we'd continue it. But the class had ended, so we just continued it in her house or mine. And we added a little bottle of wine to the mix. <laughs> and what used to be like, Maybe a six to eight class ended up being a, you know, six to 10 or even <laughs> later. <laughs> and, 
And anyway, that it was fun. And I, I once I started that, um, sometimes if we'd been working on something, I'd bring it up in the morning. Doug was still working then, so the house was empty. And I'd spread it out on the kitchen table, and you know, one of the first times I did that, I, I looked at the clock and I said, it's noontime, and I'm still in my pajamas, and I'm still painting on, trying to paint a picture on the kitchen table. I must like this. <laughs> and it is. It's very relaxing. Uh, I certainly don't have a lot of talent, uh, but I think as I heard Catherine say the other day, and I was so glad to hear her say that, that you don't necessarily have to be gifted, although obviously some of us are much more gifted than others. Uh, but it, it's an art, that, a craft that you can learn. And I find myself more and more going on YouTube or on, on something on the computer and saying, uh, how do I paint a rope on a sailboat? <laughs> and they come back with all kinds of ideas and you see what works for you and gradually you sort of get it together that way. Um, in the Williamsburg area, I'm fortunate enough now to have a, a group similar to Grace that uh, I can belong to, where we go once a week, we paint. They're much more maybe serious painters than this group is. This is a very social group, which is great. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, the first time I gathered with them, like everybody went right to work and nobody was talking and I thought, oh, I can't be quiet this long. <laughs> <laughs> and they assured me that, well, they do talk once in a while. <laughs> And they do, but mostly about what they're selling or whatever. But uh, anyway, that, that continued. And for a while, when I would come to Toddy Pond in the summer, why, uh, there was a little group in the Surrey gatherings that did the same sort of thing on Monday mornings. And that disbanded. And then I found this group this, this summer. And I'm like, yay. And I got to meet new friends and new people that live here. And reacquaint uh, myself with my good friend Charlotte. We went to high school together, if you can believe, many, many moons ago. <laughs> and it's, it's just been a fun experience. I love the outdoors of Maine. I take a lot of pictures around the coastline, and I end up painting a lot from those pictures. And even if I were going to pleasurize and maybe copy a magazine picture or something, it would so not look like that when I got done that nobody <laughs> would know anyway. So, <laughs> and that, that's about where my interest is. It's, it's just a very relaxing hobby that you can, you know, do wherever. Thank you, Ellen. <coughs> Mary Michael <coughs> Billings and her husband, Bill Sturick, who's here tonight, are the um, owners of the new establishment, the Crumpet. And, um, there are, are a number of activities and uh, events, particularly on Wednesday night. They're on the bulletin board out in the hall, and I would encourage you to, to notice that. And so, Mary Michael, what would you like to tell us about your, where are you from and a little bit about you being an artist? I don't think it's on. Is it on? Oh, okay. Uh, yes, um, I'm a crumpeteer, and that's my main passion right now, is the, the artistry of the crumpet presentation and things like that. Um, if you're an artist, then you see everything in terms of the aesthetic and, you know, how, how does it look, and you, you want, well, at least I, I like harmony in my art, so my art... Um, is searching for that kind of an aesthetic. Um, I don't know, the history of, I started painting when I was quite young and I got some lessons and uh, I just never stopped doing that, but um, it's hard to make money so I'm, I'm selling crumpets. <laughs> um, <laughs> for the grace, I'd like to say that when we started working on our cafe, we were walking around town and we saw posters for things happening at the Brown Hall. So we, you know, decided well, we'll check that out. There's a lot of great stuff that happens here, right here in this hall. And um, so I joined the Grace program just recently. I, I haven't been doing it for years. And 
uh, it was just great. I mean, I, I met so many really fine people and, and uh, people interested in art. Um, for this particular show, I just have uh, two large pieces over there that go together as a sort of landscape and um, it represents Idaho where we spent some time, my husband and I. Um, my art is usually inspired by something I, I see in the outside world or a person that I know and uh, I just feel like uh, <coughs> learning about th that aspect by studying it and you know just looking at, I don't know, the details. So I try to do that with my art, and um, I think that's about it for me. <laughs> where where <laughs> are you from, from uh, Mary Michael? Um, where am I from? Um, well, we've moved around a lot, but I've been in Maine. I came here in 1960. I think I'm almost a native. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, I don't know. I'm from a lot of different places. I live in Orrington right now. We've been there for 30 years. So I guess I'm from Orrington. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Shaw Bridges. Hi. I'm looking out and realizing that I know almost everybody here, good friends and a couple of people from my family, so supportive of my husband and my sister. I grew up in Bucksport, and in fact, my sister and I are seventh generation in Bucksport. The Harrimans and Bridges go back a long way. <laughs> um, and I feel so fortunate to be in a community uh, here. It's the community that I love. Um, as far as art is concerned, it means just about everything other than family and friends that I, that I can imagine. When you're this close to 80, and Ellen and I <laughs> sh share this, uh, this 80 thing, <laughs> um, you don't have a lot, of <coughs> lot on your bucket list anymore. So I told my husband that um, I needed to do art. I, that, that's what I, gives me joy. I get up in the morning, and once the fog leaves and uh, <laughs> I can wake up enough, I go into my studio, and and do art, and then I, I usually stay there until at least till 12, and then I come out and try to do some housework. <laughs> <laughs> but if I don't get it to the art right at the beginning, uh, it's too easy to get carried away. But I'm real serious about my art. I wasn't able to start art until I was 55 because my sister and I had lots of chores at home, indoor and outdoor, when you're on a farm, uh, there's lots to be done. The work never gets done. Also, our mother was ill and in bed a lot, so uh, we had to take care of her. So there just wasn't time for art back then. Plus, it wasn't really encouraged that much. In the, high, in the schools, we didn't have art. And uh, I used to try to find time for art late at night um, after I'd done my homework and caught up with all the work that had to be done. And you know, you just don't don't have the muse at late at night like that. So finally, I said to, said to my family when I was 55, if I'm ever going to do it, I need to do it now. And they uh, gave me money to buy art supplies, and I went went uh, off by myself for the weekend to see if I could still draw, if I could do it. And um, I found that I didn't care how how good it was. I just loved the process so much, I figured, well, I'll keep at it, and maybe it'll get better. And it did. <laughs> now, it's still not the way I want it. Like most artists, it never comes out the way I want it. But the process is, is what really pleases me. It's like a meditation. It makes me happy. Um, it, it just means everything to me. A couple of years after I started art, I was uh, blessed enough to be able to start selling, and I started my business, Shah Creating. Now, those of you who know about Maine accents know that I leave off the R, uh, Charlotte, Shah, <laughs> no R. Uh. Um, notice I did not say Shah Creations, because I'm emphasizing it's the creating that is really important to me. Although I have to admit, I, I do like it when something comes out well enough so that I can 
uh, put it up or if somebody wants to buy it. And I've been very blessed lately because I've been um, selling a lot of my cards. I've been selling all along since I started my business, but Grace did something very special for me that I want to share with you. I'd been working on my own, and uh, because I, I, you know, I was teaching myself a lot, and I, I was buying materials, but I hadn't experimented very much with a lot of media. So when I came to the Grace program, we started playing. We did things like um, printing with using, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? The 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 erasure, erasure quakes, quakes and, and yeah. Um, no, um, <laughs> usually I get, <laughs> I don't know why, why this has happened to me. Shaving cream. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and we got shaving cream all over us. And uh, we've done all kinds of fun things as well as been pretty serious about it. But what happened, um, one, one day uh, they brought out materials uh, to make templates for printing. And I had never been introduced to that because I just never had the opportunity. And I thought, oh, that looks like fun. And uh, most everybody who tried it said, ah, uh, I don't think I want to do that after today. But it really caught on for me. I got so excited about it. And I'm, I make cards from my templates and I, I've been selling them uh, quite well. Sell them at home, for example, uh, and uh, down at the lighthouse, and I sold some at the crumpet, and I sell some in individually. So I guess the thing that Grace has done for me is it's helped me play and try new things. And then the other thing, of course, is being able to be with a community of other artists. Now, you can only talk so much to your family and friends about the minutiae of art be before they can't take it anymore. <laughs> <coughs> so we get together and encourage each other and we can talk about when we get blocked and when we get stumped and when we're excited and oh I sold something and, and we just share our joys and our... Hold and your then, mic a little closer. Oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I, get, I get excited. <laughs> All right. And then what's happened is we've become such close friends that we really support each other. We all go through a lot in life, and, and we're supporting each other through the hard times. And then we get together. We had a Halloween party. Uh, we, we've had some field trips. We're taking a field trip to the uh, Farnsworth soon. And I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, Catherine Ring. Ring. Yes. Yeah. This is Phil. Can, can you hear? hear? Um, uh, I'm Catherine, Catherine, as you all know. Um, um, I guess I, I guess wanted, I wanted to, tell to tell you the story, story about, about my, my early, early years, years um, uh, that I've that never, never forgotten, forgotten uh, because, because I think it had a big impact on what I became, became as an adult. adult. Um, um, I, remember I remember going, going to going kindergarten, kindergarten class, class, my kindergarten. kindergarten. It, was it was a Catholic, Catholic school. school. I had a nun, a nun uh, for a teacher. And she rolled out the butcher paper on the floor and all and the kids, kids had to lay had down, to down next, next and with their crayons, crayons and draw and a picture of themselves and their homes, homes their, houses. their houses. So, so I, I drew myself, myself with, with wild, wild purple, purple curly, curly hair, hair and, and in, in a, a log, log cabin, cabin type, type of house. Nothing, Nothing like where I lived. I lived in New York City, right? Then the teacher, came over to me and smacked me and said, no, you do it like this. And she put me next to another little girl who had done a, a typical house with little curtains in the windows and long yellow hair. And I knew that that was not right. I knew that was not right, and I was very annoyed. <laughs> and um, I think that day was the day I thought, I'm going to grow up and be an art teacher. Because <laughs> that is what, <laughs> that is what I eventually became. Uh, I taught art to elementary, middle, high school for about 18 years, and then became a principal thinking, oh, I'll just bring art, the arts to my school, right? And I did that somewhat successfully. 
there's a, there's a whole, you know, uh, thing in motion in schools that just are very hard to, um, to uh, change dramatically. Anyway, um, so I've been teaching art, um, and that's taken me into so many different directions. Um, I got into administration. I became a principal in an elementary school and, um, and didn't like that much at all. I really liked being with kids. Eventually, I left that position in Stonington, Deer Isle, and uh, I took a job in, on Isla Ho teaching art once a week, and that was like the best thing. I had six children in a one-room schoolhouse. Every Tuesday, I was on that mailboat going out to the island, you know, and we had a blast just doing art. They loved it, and I loved it, and it was a really great experience. So, oh, in all these years, I went to get my master's degree, and in the process, uh, li living in Vermont, um, I interviewed this man, an artist, who lived in St. Johnsbury. Uh, he ran a program called the, the Grace Program, and it was for elderly people. So I was getting my master's degree, and I wanted to learn about what was it about the arts that help people learn? What does it do to the brain? And why is it so appealing to kids? If they're so fascinated with art, they can learn anything through art. So I, I was trying to tie my, my education and the art piece together. Um, this man did the program called GRACE, Grassroots Arts and Community Effort. Um, it was uh, a program for the elderly, and he just simply invited people in, didn't instruct anything, just let them play with art materials and discover themselves, you know, what they was important to them. And so I asked him in my interview, or, you know, I interviewed him, um, why aren't you instructing them, you know, like, why don't you take them to the next level or teach them something? And he explained that people who are older in their life have a lot of life experience. So, you know, it's not like teaching children. Children need to be guided to somewhat, but that the adults bring a lot to the table. So this is just a time to really explore and dig in and learn things. Um, so that was really interesting to me because I had been on this path to learn about education and this was um, truly uh, a different way of thinking about it. Um, so I brought the idea, this, is, this program started 50 years ago in Hardwick, Vermont, and um, I brought the idea, it's still going. They, these people have exhibitions and they travel all over the world now with their shows. And here we are, you know, having our first show, right? Um, so, um, so when you come to the Grace Program, it's not going to be uh, a class per se, it's really gonna be an opportunity to find out what is Deborah, Deborah doing, doing this week? What is Shaw doing? doing? What is Ellen doing? doing? You know, it's, 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 we get we inspiration from each other, each other, and that's, that's the important piece of it. Of it. So, so um, that's, that's the premise, premise of Grace. So it is open, it's, open, it's free, free to the public, the public to uh, you, anyone, anyone can join us. Join and we ask only one thing, that you leave your critical voice at the door. There's no judgment here. That's how people really grow. They feel safe, and it's okay. You can't really make a mistake, you know. Um, but you can learn a lot, and you know. And we're um, very grateful for the opportunity at Brown Hall, uh, and this venue is just the perfect place for us. So, thank you, and thank you for coming. Um. <clears throat> I want to tell a couple of stories, and then I'll move on to Deborah. Oh, I, I didn't. Wa I didn't. Are you going to go around again? Or yes. Okay. No. Um, Catherine and I met in Vermont, and um, 
I'm not going to go with that story. But uh, uh, the uh, the thing that she did uh, a, a little, maybe a year or two before I met her, was that she was on a teacher exchange uh, in with. Uh, uh, and went to China, and she took artwork from students in Vermont and presented them to a university president, and he gave artwork back for to be placed in Vermont schools, and those exhibits are still going on today, all these years later. It was quite a wonderful um, uh, experience. And the other thing that she didn't tell you was when <coughs> she was uh, principal of Darrell Stonington, she got Darrell Stonington to be the first school in the state of Maine to become affiliated with the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. And it was quite a remarkable achievement, and so I just want to add that footnote. I won't tell how we met. Okay. I'm moving. I'll, I'll move on to Deborah now and get out of the weeds. Hold it close to your mouth, please. I'll give it a try. I can hold it for you if you want. Oh, that would be great if you could. Okay. I have a tremor may hit my mouth, so we're just preventing some accidents here. Um, I'm Deborah Hawks. I did not come from Bucksport, but I chose to come here. And there's a major reason why I am an artist. But before, my profession was a reg registered nurse for 35 years. And I also became a clinical counselor and did work with high-risk families. No idea I'd ever be an artist, believe me. <laughs> what happened was I had a car accident and I developed a severe head trauma. I lost the ability to retrieve words. So my art became my language and therefore my painting. I just still don't call myself an artist, but they do. <laughs> so they have been an incredible support team. It made coming to Bucksport, because I was running away from the woman I didn't know anymore. With a head injury, I have to find out who I was once again. And if it wasn't for this group, and the acceptance for who I am today, I don't know, as I would have been here, it really had been a lifesaver. And I am so grateful for them and for the people here in Bucksport who have embraced me as I am today. So thank you. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> Um, Catherine, you've told us a bit about Grace. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else you wanted to say about that before I go down in the line again? Uh, well, the, 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 the philosophy behind the Grace program is that there's a sort of, um, they live by this in Vermont, um, uh, that action is really uh, sort of inaction. It doesn't mean that nothing is, is done, but that, um, that action that is allowed to happen naturally without forces or meddlesome efforts. Um, so I think what they're, they're saying is that um, instruction can be meddlesome sometimes. You know, and I, I've taken courses where, classes where um, I just didn't feel right about what they were trying to tell me to do. Um, Haystack or, you know, it could be other places. Um, um, I wanted to develop my own way, and that's the motto of the Grace Program in Vermont. Be yourself 
and do it your own way. So that's what we're bringing here. And there's no lack of talent here. You can see an amazing work by um, people, and we're, we're all at different phases of our lives in uh, development of art skills. I really don't believe that art is a talent as much as it is development of skills over time. And the more you practice, the better you get. It's just like in anything. But, um, and so, you know, you'll see a, a, a real range of different media and different methods, and it's all great. And that's the whole point. We want a safe place for people to come and explore. So that's the premise of grace. Uh, if you look at the artwork, you'll notice that there are little artist statements around the room by each of us, and there's a little colored dot. So <laughs> rather than put an artist's name on each piece, if you see that on this statement there's an orange dot, then any painting that has an orange dot is, belongs to that person. So it's a little bit easier, easier than putting labels on everything. Um, so what we're going to do in a few minutes is uh, we'll have people talk about you know what maybe I don't know if we've done that already, but um, well we've got more to cover. Okay, um, but we are going to have you go with some whoever you like to ask questions of to their art, so you can see more clearly. Um, what, um, what they've what done, they've and um, the art's going to be up for quite a while, and we're going to um, rotate it out sometimes, like put new stuff up. So it'll be like an evolving art exhibit over time. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just before, uh, the, the next question I'm going to ask, I'm going to just give you a minute to think about it while I make an announcement or two. Um, to tell us about what do you think one of the most important uh, experiences has been for you being in grace. Um, so I'm going to just, I know some of you have talked about things, but is there one or two things that have stuck out to you? So I'm going to come back to you and give you a few minutes to think about that. Uh, uh, now, uh, I want to say that tonight, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do and are doing is we're going to have a reception following this uh, program uh, in which we have uh, some very delightful um, um, refreshments and uh, we have some uh, not only hot drinks but we have some non-alcoholic uh, beverages and people uh, in our, uh, in my sphere of influence, have brought things tonight to uh, to help celebrate the artist. And so this has been not only to introduce everyone to art, the artist program here, but to to really celebrate and honor people. So I hope you'll stay around. And uh, also, um, uh, in in terms of if you see a piece that you're interested in buying, you need to speak to the artists themselves because some people, you know, are willing to sell their work and some are not. And over behind me um, is some of Catherine's work. And it was, uh, there's a picture she drew for me for my birthday years ago of James Baldwin because I've written a book about James Baldwin. It's going to be published. And uh, someone who shall remain nameless uh, said to me, ooh, I'd like to buy that. And I said, that is not for sale. <laughs> but, uh, but speak to the artists, you know, and they may or may not, you know, um, uh, want to sell. And uh, there's also art out in the hall. And Deborah has got a fabulous exhibit so we hope that you will really wander around with whatever you're sipping and nibbling on and enjoy the art. Okay, so um, 
I'm going to ask maybe one or two more questions. I'm going to ask the audience to be ready if you want to ask questions. Um, and so we'll take this one, and it can be sort of brief. It doesn't need to be a long thing. But um, uh, what is your, what is maybe one thing that was really important to you in your experience with grace since you've been part of it? Ellen, I'll start with you. I'm a fairly new participant in this group. Uh, in fact, I probably attended maybe on one hand. We can count the number of times I've been here since I just found out about it. I noticed it in, I guess, the enterprise. I have to keep from saying the free press. That's how old I am. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's so welcoming to be with other people who like to create, and it is it encourages me to know that I'm going to, one morning a week, gather with a group that sort of likes to do what I like to do. I may be on the low end of the experience level in this group, but it, it also, during the week, encourages me to, oh, I hope I can finish this picture and take it in and show the group what this ended up being. So I think that's what it means to me. Thank you. Mary Michael, thank you for that answer. Well, I feel like I'm a new bird uh, in this group as well, and I haven't been to as many um, uh, get-togethers because I was working on trying to open this cafe, but um, I, I guess my most memorable thing is how um, Grace was willing to uh, be the the opening show at, at the Crumpet <laughs> and um, just brought down so much amazing artwork and uh, we sold a few pieces and I mean it just really um, was meeting my expectations <laughs> and more um, and I realized that Buck's Board is just really full of very creative, uh, very artistic people and there's a wealth, wealth of it out there and people want to come in and and look at art and talk about it and you know, feel good about uh, just sitting there and contemplating uh, some of the work that we have to show. Um, so Grace is not showing there anymore, but uh, we're going to be having uh, a new artist uh, every first Wednesday of the month. So um, I just encourage people that are interested you don't have to come to the opening per se, but the, the art is there all month, and uh, just drop in and, and see it. Thank you, Sean. Well, I've already said quite a bit about Grace, but the thing I get most excited about is when people succeed and get excited about their work, and when some of them sell it, or finally get to the point where they can put it up. <laughs> Um, we're not the only ones in the GRACE program. I was uh, started out at the beginning. We had a couple dozen at that point and also uh, had some of the REACH students with us and then the pandemic hit us. And um, we managed to keep in touch with each other through the pandemic and, and uh, even then did a project for the library uh, by com you know, kind of working together through the phone and and then uh, putting it together, but um, I, I don't know, when, when I see somebody else get excited, it pleases me so much. It, um, I, I'm gonna mention a name, Bridget, put that beautiful coming mm -hmm. That is the most beautiful thing, and it didn't come easy to her to put it up. Um, Ginny has recently sold some paintings at home. Um, we have another person who had, hadn't ever so, sold anything and uh, she got so excited about her cards. Uh, it's funny because we, uh, Bridget introduced us to Zentangle. Ginny and I couldn't stand it. We couldn't wait for it to be over. <laughs> but Eileen got so excited. She started mass producing all these beautiful cards. I took them over to Home Incorporated. They started selling. This is what excites me, where we help each other, uh, we share our joys and our sorrows, 
uh, it's a real community. Kathy? Yeah, um, <coughs> I brought Grace to this program, this area here, because it was really a very selfish thing. <laughs> I really um, wanted, needed a group of people who were like-minded in, in the way that we are. Um, so I am totally am, uh, you know, enthralled with this group, and they're my best friends now. You know, I just feel that we've bonded in a way that is just wonderful. And so, yeah, that's. Deborah, you need to hold the mic, Kathy. They opened up the doors for me. Art has become a very healing part of my journey. And what you have out in the corridor is an invitation from me to share my journey. The paintings have become a part of me. So what you see there and what you experience is me. My painting came about as a result of the accident. I had this desire, I had to paint. I just had to paint. And it still comes through me through spirit. It wakes me up at two o'clock in the morning and I have to get up and get my easels and my paint and my brushes and paint. I never think about what I'm painting. It just happened. So what you see out there is surely my healing process. And so I welcome you to experience that journey along with me. And I'd be more than happy to share what those paintings mean to me. And I'd love to have you just go out there and experience it. I had to have PTSD treatment and it was all about my art. The colors actually correlate with body parts and also the emotions. And so that's what I've learned throughout this experience is that we're all tied together with all the vibrations in this world. I knew it ahead of time, but it's more important to me now because it has helped me to heal. So Thank if you. you have any questions, feel free to ask me <coughs> questions and I'll help you out. Thank you. And Deborah, Deborah has a couple of uh, books out there on the table in the hallway that really explain her process. So that's just out there for you to look at. If you so to be like. clear, um, Deborah's journey from beginning to a, a, to a final piece, or what is at the moment a final piece called Hope, is displayed uh, sequentially in the hall. So when you go out here and turn left, you see the um, handicap access bathroom, but if you turn down that hall, her, her, her artwork is displayed there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the journey, if I can use that Mary Oliver term. And I have packets out there. I have packets out there that help you to experience it. And I've attached musical songs as something to listen to that also correlates with my journey. Okay, we are now going to go to audience. Uh, questions, and I'm going to ask those who have a question, they'd like to ask the artist to come to the mic while I'm doing that and seeing who might come forward. Um, I want to mention that in the back of the table, and McCann is selling raffle tickets to benefit our church, and there's a Thanksgiving basket and a a uh, pillow and uh, the promise of Anne McCann's famous lemon meringue pie. So uh, please buy tickets. I think they're six for $5. And, uh, and then over here, 
Uh, Doug, Doug it's got, got these two baskets, baskets of art supplies. supplies. One would be for children, one for, would be for adults. So perhaps you know a child you want to, uh, you know, you, you want to think about as the holidays come up. Uh, does anyone have a question you'd like to step forward and, and ask the artist at this point? Wow. You did such a good job. Nobody wants to ask you anything. It's either that or they know we got real good refreshments. <laughs> um, for those of you who are watching by way of the internet, I want to say that if you call um, our office, um, and want to learn more about Grace or how to get involved in Grace or where is Brown Hall. Some people are still lost on that question. Uh, you can call us. Um, we are having a bit of a problem with our landline right now, which is being repaired, but the number is 469-3333. If you don't get anywhere with that, you can call my cell phone. Um, Dr. Stephen York, and that is 951-7544. So I'm going to do last call on questions. Anyone with a question? Johanna. The mic on? Yeah. Good evening. Um, so I was just wondering if this artwork on the walls is all artwork that's been done during the time frame of grace, or if you've even brought in some work from maybe the, your time prior to joining this group. Good question. Who wants to start on that? Well, I, I know <coughs> the stuff, well, my rooster over there, he was done since I've been coming here, I believe. And my little birds on the fence, and I think the rest of it I had done down at the lake, and I had hanging down there. So, right. A lot of people have been doing this for years, but really had no place to exhibit. Uh, Mary Michael. Um, my pieces I painted when I was living in Idaho, and. Um, it, it's a landscape of Idaho based on what I would have been seeing driving home from graduate school uh, across uh, the Palouse, uh, which was like a plateau, and then you would come down over these hills and you could see for miles and miles and there were hardly any trees and I don't know, it's like the west, the wild west. Okay, shop. All the paintings and drawings that I have, uh, I did before the class started. But I have here the cards that I developed as a direct experience from being introduced to the materials here. And they're over there if you'd like to look at those. Okay, so Catherine. Catherine. I'd say a little, say a little both. both. Uh, uh, some, some things, things that I've done in the past, past and also um, a lot of the, you'll notice the, the metallic, metallic pans, pans over there. there. That was that definitely was an in-house in grace, grace, you know, project. project. Um, uh, and, and we also, we also did, did the mural, mural together, together. Um, and, and some other some things, other things too. too, so that's a combination. The, mur the, the mural, mural is at the library, right. Right. is that right? right. right. Okay. Deborah? Deborah? Well, um, it's combination. The first stage of my journey, which are the smaller paintings, I did prior. That was basically in response to the PTSD treatment and the particular psychologist. His premise was the emotions that were shown related to the color vibration and also the vibration of your body parts where you actually house your emotions. So I remember one of the first paintings that I did do is the yellow 12 by 12 with the little hummingbird on it. 
And yellow helps people focus. And believe me, I was not focusing at all. In fact, I had the hardest time to remember words. So I was learning words and using mind games to be able to learn words again, to recall those and to focus. My first gift from the therapist was a book on how to schedule my appointments, and I was having five different appointments a week. So um, all the little ones up there, the rainbow, they're all associated with body parts. Um, so each one of those was dealing with the healing of my body. I had a lot of physical problems. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, a little bit of everything. Um, so those were before I came here. Once I moved to Bucksport away from not knowing who I was or what I was going to be, I took a year off and meditated for a whole year and didn't do any art. But then, after I did that, grace came about. So I came alive when grace came alive and my pictures and paintings got bigger and bigger. Mm. I'd like a wall, anybody have a spare wall? That's my next thing to do. It just seems to mushroom. So, um, and I tend to do um, a lot of abstract because that's what I can do with my hands. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, announce that next month, December the 13th, uh, we will be having Derek Cole as our guest from Main Street Bucksport, and he's doing phenomenal work. He has an office here in Brown Hall. Uh, he is doing more than I can even take the time to uh, talk about tonight, but he has agreed to be my guest here uh, on the second Tuesday of the month. Again, raffle tickets in the back, raffle tickets over here. Uh, we have um, a fine, um, some fine reception, uh, fi re yeah, let me start again. We have some fine refreshments which are going to come out in a moment, but please talk to the artists. And, uh, and uh, for those of you who have been watching by way of the internet, this has been Brown Hall Center for Community and the Cultural Arts. And we are pleased that you've joined us wherever you are. And um, I want for, I would like to invite you to join me now in giving our appreciation to these artists. So this has been Dr. Stephen York, and we will see you again next month on the Know Your Neighbor program. Thank you. And um, come meet the artists now. All right.